So let me start this video by bringing up something Seo Koji, the mangaka for Megami no Cafe, said uh, fairly recently. He said that the winner, Hayato's wife, has not yet been decided, meaning he hasn't planned the winner in advance. Which uh, does feel a little bit like cheating on his part, mystery wise, but then I guess he never marketed the manga as a mystery to begin with. We only learn about Hayato's daughter in chapter 27. If he wanted that to be the main plot point, then he would have introduced it earlier in the series, maybe in the opening chapter. Now, if his words are true, then it means there is no trail of treats to follow in order to figure out the wife. No hints, no clues, no mystery traits to pick up on. There is, however, another way. And that's by looking at Hayato's relationships with the five girls. If the wife wasn't locked in on a mystery structure, and according to Seokoji it wasn't, then the relationship between them will have to vouch for it. Of course, we're still going to look for anything that resembles a clue, but if those won't show up, then character relationship it is. That being said, let's establish some ground rules before we get into the nitty gritty. Hayato's wife can only be one of the first five girls. That's because, in chapter 27, Hayato's daughter confirmed that one of the girls in this picture is a mother. So, uh, I'm sorry, alter versions of the main heroines, you're not included. A bit of a shame for Rei too, since she was quite a good character. And I am personally very sad for Mao. I like her quite a lot. Of course, maybe Seo Koji will pull some sort of retcon and make that picture irrelevant. Who knows, I can't account for that turn of events. So we'll just have to work with what we have at the moment, and that picture is the most relevant thing at the moment. Also, the appearance of Hayato's daughter does not matter at all. She inherited Hayato's genes, as she looks just like his grandmother. She does have a striking similarity to Mao Takasaki, but since she's not one of the first five, she's uh, irrelevant. Seo Koji definitely made her design that way, so there couldn't be any connection to any of the girls. Also, keep in mind that there are 113 chapters at the time of me making this video, so if anything important happens in the chapters after that, I wouldn't know about it. With that out of the way, let's start with a childhood friend. I was a little bit surprised at how this childhood trope was handled. I was expecting the history between Shiragiku and Hayato to be a lot more impactful for both of them, but it turns out they just had a little encounter where Hayato helped her out of an uncomfortable situation. I guess my expectations were subverted. She did train under Hayato's grandmother to become a chef and therefore learn certain things about him, but they didn't interact that much back then. She made a promise to herself, most likely for the sake of his grandma, that if Hayato comes back and takes over the cafe, she will support him with everything she's got. So, from the day Hayato chose to take over the cafe, he's got Shiragiku's support. We'll see how much their support mattered shortly. Another important thing that resulted from their childhood encounter was the reassurance that Sachiko, Hayato's grandma, wasn't forced to give up on her dreams of opening her own restaurant because she had to take care of Hayato. She chose to give up on that because she loved Hayato and loved spending time with him much more than having a restaurant business. Shiragiku telling this to Hayato made him able to flip a page and leave his doubt behind. So this little childhood encounter did ultimately have some positive impact on Hayato. It doesn't seem like anything major, but still an impact nonetheless. Now the more important question is, how much did Shiragiku's support help Hayato early on? After he decided to take over the cafe and put the girls to work, Hayato is met with uh, a few complaints from four of them. Shiragiku is actually the only one who agrees with what he says. And you can actually see her throughout the first few chapters, how she tries to get the other four to accept Hayato, how she invites Hayato to dine with them, how she's always in the background smiling and nodding to Hayato, how she never talks back to him. And of course, she accepts him from the very beginning because she has already met him before and because she likes him. As she says it in the first chapter, she's been liking Hayato for a very long time. She's also the one who does the important talk early on, like in chapter 3, when the girls ran out of money for cafe food and had to pitch in from their pockets. Shiragiku carried on that conversation with Hayato. She worries about Hayato and always asks questions about him. Also, always tries to get the girls to go easy on him. The point is that while Shiragiku doesn't have any flashy moments early on, as some of the others have, 
She's always in the background supporting Hayato with everything she can. From small things like cleaning extra dishes to bigger things like discussing the business situation. She is supporting him from a very unconditional place, so to say. For example, in chapter 30, when the girls are supposed to leave for the Obon holidays, which is like 3 days long, before taking off, Shiragiku tells Hayato that she left some food in the freezer for him, and if he doesn't want that, then she also left some instant food, and so on. So she's genuinely attentive, and her intentions are pure. She has a couple, uh, I mean several, alcoholic moments when she gets close to Hayato in a different way. Now, these are used as comedic relief, but they do also reveal some of Shiragiku's intentions. Intentions that she officially reveals to Hayato fairly early on, but we'll talk about those in just a second when we get into the relationship. For the time being, it's important to know that Hayato has noticed Shiragiku's quiet support and pointed it out on several occasions. Like in chapter 67, when he wanted to throw her a surprise birthday party to thank her for everything she's done for him. Or in chapter 78, when Hayato tells Shiragiku that, despite her drunk behavior, he is thankful for her help. So her efforts didn't go unnoticed. And that made it so their relationship didn't have any conflict. They started on good terms and kept being on good terms. Again, their interactions might not have been flashy or super memorable, but their relationship was constantly good and headache free. Now, in chapter 43, during the picnic, Shiragiku makes her intentions clear. She didn't officially confess, but stated in front of Hayato and the other girls that she wouldn't mind becoming Hayato's wife, which is something she's gonna say a lot lot often later down the line. Earlier in chapter 36, she soft confessed to Hayato, but played it off as a joke, pretending to be drunk. Hayato was actually pretty quick to notice that she might have not been drunk at the time. And then... Um, she was kind of placed on hold. Of course, we shouldn't expect Hayato to reciprocate this soon, but the tiny issue here is the situation Seokoji put Shiragiku in, and that's being on hold. She told Hayato she likes him, she made her intentions clear, and now what? The ball is in Hayato's side of the field, but he doesn't seem to be playing. And that put Shiragiku next to her teammates, Akane and Riho. I'm going to talk about them in just a bit, but what I mean by her teammates is the um, on hold gang. They confessed, but nothing came out of it, and now they are pushing their feelings onto Hayato with every chance they get. It doesn't mean it's hopeless and they are losers by default, but it's one of those red flags that would be weird to ignore. However, Shiragiku has a couple of advantages in this competition. Advantages that wait quite a bit. She was Hayato's first kiss and also his first love. Now, the first kiss is pretty self-explanatory, but the kiss itself has a lot more meaning than it appears to have. She still him a sneak kiss as a culmination of her feelings, as a way to show him how much she loves him and maybe move the relationship forward. With Riho and Akane, um, they kind of kiss him just because Mao told them to. If you've read the manga in this scene, you know what I'm talking about. Akane's kiss was long and uneventful, and Riho's got her 19th rom-com kiss, both without much impact behind them. Sort of, let's just get over those kisses and move on. Which, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, they get more kisses later down the line, but the first kisses felt so lackluster. I mean, Shiragiku definitely got on top of the others, and Oka's kiss is a completely different story, we'll get to that soon. First love. In chapter 104, we learn from Hayato himself that Shiragiku was his first love, or rather, first crush. He did think she was cute back then, when she was a kid, and kept asking her father about her. So, it's fair to say he had a crush on her. And given that Hayato is aware of all of this, it means Shiragiku does have a slight advantage over some of the others. I wouldn't say she's the favorite, but nor that she is out of the picture, like someone else is. Towards the end of the video, I will rank their chances based on how well their relationships are going, but for now, let's talk about each individually and, well, it's time to look at the best girl, Akane, or is she? I uh, noticed a bunch of weird stuff happening with Akane on a reread, which I think might be some sort of fetish of Seokoji. I'm not going to mention it here because, well, it's kind of weird, but it has something to do with going to the toilet. Manga readers, you know for sure, 
yeah anyway i kind of gives off these uh, odd miku vibes for those of you who've read the quintessential quintuplets in the sense that they both start as these cold and distant characters maybe with a devil may care attitude towards the mc whenever they speak they have these clever lines sometimes some mocking comments they have a very confident form of teasing they do seem to be in complete control of any situation until they develop feelings for the mc that's when everything changes is it for the better for the worse well let's see shall we if we're talking about the early chapters hayato and akane seem to have the most organic and quite believable relationship out of everyone else they have a little bit of everything a bit of conflict some cute moments, sad moments, some back and forth teasing and some conversation, mutual support and all that kind of peaks at chapter 35 with occasional high and lows from their own. And I know it's a weird thing to say given how many important things happen later on regarding these two but hear me out. In chapter 35 she confessed to Hayato. She used Natsume Soseki's famous phrase, got it out of her chest and actually got an answer. Same as some of the others, on hold with you Akane, on hold. Hayato prioritizes the cafe over anything else, especially over romance. However, he responds by saying something quite interesting. So following Akane's version of Natsume Soseki's confession, the stars are really beautiful tonight, aren't they? He has his speech about wanting to focus on the cafe and then he tells Akane it would be nice someday to enjoy this coffee while watching the stars or something. Pretty much playing off of Akane's confession, implying that while his answer is currently on hold, he wouldn't mind trying it in the future, trying to have a relationship with Akane someday. It would be nice to have that someday. And this ties into what he says in chapter 69, that if they ever start dating, Again, implying that them dating is not out of the question. Hayato didn't throw away the idea of dating Akane, so it's a bit of a different on hold than in Shiragiku's case, and especially in Riho's case. Now, why am I saying the relationship peaked? It's because their interactions after that confession are basically just Akane pushing and pushing and pushing and Hayato not taking that very well. There are some occasional highs, as I said, the marriage chapter is one of them, the boyfriend misunderstanding is another but for the most part it's more of the same push she's the first we see to develop feelings for hayato her progression went pretty smoothly for the most part she confessed in a very clever way noticing that hayato reads a lot or at least has plenty of books so she used the poetic the moon is beautiful isn't in the way of confession when she realized that she had hit a plateau she turned a shopping visit into a date and bluntly asked hayato to marry her to marry her. She's quite active in her pursuit of Hayato, she tries to do a lot and that puts a bit too much pressure on Hayato. Pressure that turns into annoyance and pressure that leads to nothing. Take the uh, marriage proposal for example from chapter 67. Hayato forgot about her birthday and instead of a gift she asks him to fulfill one of her wishes which is to marry her. Following that she keeps nagging him to give her an answer even though he is visibly irritated and just wants to focus on work. He even gets uh, abducted by Akane's grandma when she heard that her granddaughter wants to marry him. So when I'm saying pressure, oh boy do I mean it. Now sometimes it's good, like in chapter 93 when Hayato saw Akane with another guy, got the wrong idea and he got uh, jealous as he says it himself in this panel. Then the Chiki Akane tease him and kiss him which brought out Hayato's feelings. And this is interesting because Hayato has feelings for Akane. It's not up to interpretation, it's just plain and obvious. So far Hayato hasn't really confirmed his feelings for anyone. I mean sure he let out some intentions and hints that he may like some of them but nothing concrete until Akane. Of course, if Hayato confirms his feelings for the other girls too, then Akane doesn't really benefit from this advantage. But pressure aside, what Akane has over the other girls at the moment is confirmation from Hayato that he does indeed like her and has feelings for her enough to make him jealous. Now before we talk about the next girl, let's actually touch a bit on the uh, on hold gang. Akane, Riho and Shiragiku are the first to fall in love with Hayato, back to back, and the first to confess 
back to back. I'm talking about one chapter apart. Now, Shiraki could probably aside because she already knew Hayato since childhood. The other two made the first steps out of the five, fell in love, confessed and made Hayato acknowledge their feelings. Put the ball in his side of the field. The on Hall gang also had the most page time early on and got a lot more focus than the rest. I mean Shiragiku, Akane and Riho get paired up so many freaking times that we could really think of them as a package. And if you've read any harem manga you'd be a bit suspicious of these interactions because usually, and by usually I mean every single time, the first girl or girls to confess and show their intentions towards an MC uh, lose. They lose. But why is that? I noticed that the heroine who doesn't show her affection as much or has it in your face always gets the upper hand. By contrast, those who are clingy and push their feelings hard on the MC fall behind. Once the reserve heroine shows her affection, it's game over for the rest. And I think chapter 45 is a good indicator of that. You have Akane, Riho and Shiragiku declaring their love, right? All three confessed but Hayato put his answers on hold because he says he needs to look after the cafe. They give Hayato something extra to worry about and so every time he is alone with any of them and they make advances, which is every single time, Hayato has that to worry about. And at some point, he gets really tired of it man. He put his answers on hold but they keep pushing so what can he do? The guy got uh, the dream because of 3 kisses in a row and started having female phobia because of how much they push him. There is uh, this funny panel where I think Seo Koji was self-aware of the tropes and pretty much commented on how the first to confess is 100% getting rejected. It's more like a whole scene in chapter 76 where Hekiru, this character that acts like the voice of uh, obvious tropes, explains Akane how the classic harem structure works. Shiragiku, Riho and Akane chase after Hayato, trying their hardest to fight for his affection. But Oka saves her stamina waiting until the end to sprint and grab the prize. Oh, the dark horse Ami could come in clutch too. I'm sure every harem author is aware of those tropes, I mean we are aware as readers, then they must definitely be aware too. The intriguing thing here is that Seo Koji purposely put this scene in, which could mean two things. He's just a troll or he wants to make a statement and I think he's trolling. Because the statement that would come out of this scene is that Oka and Ami won't win, pretty much. And I doubt stating that benefits his manga in any way, so a troll it is. Especially when he does that a lot more often through Hekiru as she gets more page time. But overall I think it's a really clever way because Seo Koji lets the readers know that he is super self aware of what is happening and that the harem structure won't necessarily apply in his case. It's mental games guy I tell you. But despite his uh, mental games, it doesn't mean there aren't characters more likely to lose and more likely to win, like our next girl, Riho. You know, I've never actually seen a Tundere character lose the Tundere this fast. I'm reading the manga again for this video and less than 50 chapters in, I completely forgot she was ever a Tundere. That's actually quite nice to see, I don't know how much this transition will help her chances, but we'll see. That being said, at the beginning of the manga she has the, it's not like I said, did attitude, but she actually does whatever Hayato tells her to do without protesting that much. She has a few stingy comments as befitting her early tundra image, but as we can see in chapter 4, Hayato views her as the most normal out of the five. He says that Akane has a scary expression, Shiragiku is too shy, Oka is a dick and Ami an idiot, so he'd rather go shopping with a normal girl. To his surprise though, the normal girl ends up giving him a wake up slap by the end of the chapter. His first lesson of significance that improved his weak resolve. So that's a green flag right there. Following that Riho started to take his intentions seriously. She now gives him bits of advice and pushes him to get things done. And puts 110 effort in the cafe. Of course the effort ties into her internal conflict, that of wanting to be useful to others. Hayato helping her through it is the catalyst for her falling in love. She came to work at this unknown cafe in this unknown town with the hopes that nobody would recognize that she was a child prodigy actress. That's a part of her past that she wishes to keep buried. We saw how much it affected her family and how much it affected her, yet she's still willing to bring up her past in order to help Hayato with the cafe. 
When the cafe had seemed to lose its customers and hopes due to the rival business, she used her past and connections, created a story and put Hayato in the cafe in the first place. When she goes, she goes hard. Hayato even needs to tell her to take it easy, take a break from time to time, but he's still very grateful for her support. Now, chapter 38 is where the relationship changes. Riho doesn't beat around the bush anymore and outright tells Hayato that she likes him. Hayato doesn't deny her, but puts her on hold. He's happy to hear that Riho likes him, but due to his focus being on the cafe, he can't afford to worry about a romantic relationship. And this is a good thing, right? It's a response that leaves the door open. But because it happened so early in the manga, the door is going to stay open for a very long long time. And what can Riho do during this time? Well, of course, try to get Hayato to like her even more. However, all of her advances to Hayato are met with some sort of refusal. Take chapter 58 for example. She's got two tickets at a hot spring and invites Hayato to come with her. Hayato stores the situation as much as he can until he's saved by the other girls. Now, you may be thinking, well of course he couldn't just say yes, it's a harem after all, right? But it's not about his answer. Really, it's about the scene itself. You don't make a scene that will result in a refusal of some form, in this case stalling an answer, if you're not expecting that. You don't put a character in a clearly unfavorable situation if you expect an eventual favorable outcome. Does that make sense? If Riho was going to be Hayato's wife, then she wouldn't be put in these unfavorable situations. She wouldn't be put in a situation that could be met with a refusal. You'll see how these things are avoided with some of the other heroines when we get to them. And because of this, I don't think Riho will be Hayato's wife. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure she cannot be. They have a genuinely great relationship that gets even better when they are alone as Riho doesn't need to fight for his attention. But because she's been put in those unfavorable situations over and over again, I doubt she has a chance. Now, let's talk about a mad dog before we talk about the dark horse. The thing that stands out about Oka is that she is interested in Hayato, but she isn't obsessed. For example, the on whole gang would do anything to get an advantage on Hayato, like in chapter 59 when they each try to get a room with him and later see his uh, uncut role, while Oka is like, hey yo, calm down, this food looks amazing. She's interested, but she doesn't obsess over him. Another important thing about Oka and also Ami, Ami fits into this as well, but we're not talking about her yet, although it's good to keep it in mind, is that Oka gets to develop as a character first and also build her friendly and familiar relationship with Hayato before anything romantic gets introduced between the two. The spark is there, a uh, sadistic spark that is, but by the time it evolves into something more, they already have a strong foundation for their relationship. Throughout the manga, they had this small and big conflict that came up every now and then, that they managed to overcome, setting a fresh and solid foundation for whatever is next to come. And of course, I'm talking about romance. But why is this good? Because a confession and a romantic move will come as a climax to finish up a character's relationship with a love interest. When everything else is done and a confession is all that's left, that usually seals the deal. This way, you also avoid putting the characters into unfavorable situations with their love interest. Because Oka starts by being very cautious around Hayato. She tries to protect her friends but also herself from him. But she slowly sees how much Hayato cares about the cafe, about the girls, about herself. She tries to deny it as much as she can, but we can see glimpses where her true feelings slip out. They have this back and forth relationship, like the power goes from one to the other and no one has full control. One time we might get Oka teasing Hayato all of a sudden, then we might get Hayato poking fun at Oka and taking the power. They have conflicts that they work through, going from neutral to even disliking each other a bit, to understanding one another and slowly growing closer after each situation they overcome together. While their personalities seem to be very opposite, they are actually much more similar than they're led to be believed. They care about the other four girls in a very similar way. From little things like in chapter 61, when Ami met her grandma after a long time and she was taken aback by her illness. Oka was worried about her and wanted to step in to support her. However, Hayato offers a different type of support. He still worries and cares for Ami like Oka, but instead of stepping in, he trusts she will manage the situation herself. 
When Ami didn't get the result she hoped for, it's them that comfort her and fix the issue. When Riho wanted to go to visit her dying mother in the hospital, it was Oka who literally kicked Hayato out and forced him to go with Riho. They also have this mutual respect for each other's resolve and dream. Hayato doesn't want to keep Oka working at the cafe if he believes there will be no future for the business and therefore no future for her. She could be attending university and work towards a brighter future but instead she follows her dreams and chooses her battles. On the same page, Oka respects Hayato's resolve to look after the cafe despite having a place at the biggest Tokyo university. She says it in chapter 48 that despite their fight, she respects Hayato for how much effort he puts in the cafe. I also want to mention Hayato's interactions with Oka's father from the same chapter, which are pretty funny, albeit interesting at the same time. So Oka's father attended the same university and the same course as Hayato and he essentially gave them his blessing. He misunderstood their relationship of course but blessed them nonetheless, he's quite fond of Hayato and as it happens so is Oka's sister Kika. But what I always found curious about Oka is how despite Shiragiku being the chef of this family, the apprentice of Hayato's grandma, his grandma actually taught Oka how to make her signature pilaf, even though her cooking is absolutely horrible. Now we know the pilaf has quite a bit of significance to Hayato and so it's quite interesting how Sachiko instructed Oka to make the pilaf for Hayato if anything happened to her. Now I would imagine Shiragiku would be able to make it if she was told but it doesn't change the fact that Sachiko instructed Oka to make it for Hayato. The scene from the first chapter when Oka gave Hayato the pilaf is also where she changed his opinion on him ever so slightly. That's also the catalyst that changed Hayato's mind to demolish the place and instead take over it. So weirdly enough, the pilaf holds a great amount of significance here. It's also implied that Oka has made the pilaf for Hayato several times as stated in chapter 88 that it was the last time she could make the pilaf for him. Speaking of chapter 88, this is probably one of the most genuine and emotional interactions I've read in this manga. It doesn't seem like much but to finally see Oka be honest with herself and thanking Hayato for everything he's done for her, man it sets such a wistful atmosphere. It's goodbye and both of them know it. Now I want to point out that it's a very bold move to send away one of your main heroines before she made any moves on the protagonist but also very clever because this way she can naturally be placed on hold. She doesn't have to stagnate her progression. And her departure, wow, left quite an impact on Hayato. He tried and tried in vain to find little reasons to delay her departure and of course, Twisted Oka comes out and talk about kisses. If this isn't the best kiss in the manga, then which is it? Really beautiful scene, all that build up and payoff, fucking amazing. It's also interesting how in chapter 92, Akane says that Hayato's coffee is finally back to normal. He got over Oka's departure. Akane has been tasting his coffee every day to see how long it would take him to move on and this implies a couple of things. One, Hayato is simply said that one of his family members left, which might as well be the case, but also it could be that Oka's kiss and her departure still lingers in his mind. In chapter 99 when Rei asks him if she can leave at the cafe and take Oka's room, he denies her because he promised Oka he'll keep the room free for a while, he still hopes that she will return at some point. And Oka is uh, back, wait what the fuck? Well that didn't last long now did it? To be honest this does take uh, away from her initial departure, narratively speaking, you know it's a twist, not a great twist but a twist. It doesn't really affect her relationship with Hayato, it even strengthens it as Oka confesses her failure to Hayato and when she learned from Shiragiku that Hayato has been asking about her, worrying about her condition, about her well-being, she felt really supported. She knew she had somebody to come back to and that's the moment where she, let's say officially, faces and accepts her feelings. One thing to note is that her behavior towards Hayato has massively changed ever since she came back from France. Don't get me wrong, it was supposed to change because of her feelings but it feels a bit forced, like her behavior in chapter 113. It seems out of character to me, 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of her quick return. I wish she was gone for long enough to make her return a bit more impactful. But it is what it is, you know. I hope this change in behavior doesn't affect her character going forward. And speaking of behavior changes going forward, Ami. Ami is quite an interesting character because she has this I am an idiot aura around her. She does a lot of silly stuff and she's used a lot for comedy. But she also has these mysterious moments scattered throughout the manga. Like when she suddenly spoke French to a kid. By the way, that was never mentioned again. You have moments like in chapter 47 when Hayato and Ami just play Street Fighters, have a good time playing video games, at least one of them that is. Chapter 34 when Hayato takes her to see a hero Super Sentai looking show. He's not uh, particularly happy to go but when he sees how much fun Ami has, he gives in. And she just wants to make memories with him. So they have this innocent, no ulterior motive kind of relationship. But Ami can do more than that, she's no stranger to her feminine side. It's interesting to point out that she has the same family situation as Hayato. She lost her parents in an accident when she was young and her grandma has been taking care of her ever since. They have that uh, tragic bond to connect with which is something only they can understand. Unlike the other girls, Ami doesn't make a big fuss over some normal albeit a bit uh, inappropriate situations, like in chapter 63 when they both attend a mix bath. They have that initial surprise but whatever, it's a mix bath after all, why turn the situation into something that it's not? And so they relax and talk without causing an unnecessary buzz. Even when Ami makes a famous or maybe infamous want to cop a field gag, Hayato isn't really bothered. They actually talk about the reason she said that, where he came from and when he realizes that it was Ami's way to show gratitude for what he's done to help her grandma, he's like, fine, whatever, give them here. Uh, it is a weird scene, not gonna lie, but that aside, it does show how comfortable they are around each other, especially Hayato. It's something that can be contrasted with his interactions with the on whole gang from the same arc. When the other three make indecent advances to Hayato, he's just not interested. It's also kind of cute how Hayato accepts and protects Ami's uh, sixth grade mentality. She believes in Santa, so Hayato does everything he can to protect her belief. When people talk about the fake Santa, he covers her ears. When she wishes for a workout machine from Santa, Hayato buys her an up roller because he's a cheap guy. Point is that he goes out of his way to play along with Ami. So they have this genuinely pure relationship, they go out, have a good time, make and treasure memories, no loss, no headache, none of them. However, he sort of views himself as Ami's guardian and gives off the vibes of a true familiar relationship. Of course, it doesn't mean he can't go above, after all not related by blood, but it's the only relationship that genuinely feels like say, a brother and a little sister or a parent and a child. Like in chapter 105 when Ami was left alone during her university entrance ceremony, usually her grandma would attend with her because a parent or a guardian is supposed to be there with you. Now despite Ami telling Hayato not to come because her sister will be there for her, spoiler she wasn't, he still went out of his way to make sure Ami will have someone to support her nonetheless. When she was feeling down because she was all alone, Hayato came. He even wore the same funny glasses her grandma used to wear at these entrance ceremonies. So that's why I'm saying that it feels like a parent-child relationship more than anything. There is this page in chapter 91 where Ami thinks back on the memory she made with Hayato and the result of that is the Doki Doki feeling. Which uh, surprised me a little bit because I kind of believe that Ami was pretending at least half pretending to be an idiot, but it turns out she was actually just an idiot. When those feelings are going to get fleshed out and Ami understands them, then they could evolve their relationship into something more because they already have a very strong foundation. Ami is uh, quite literally a dark horse at the moment just because she hasn't undergone the romantic transition. It's going to take a good while before she taps into that romance territory. However, there seem to be plenty of volumes left. Judging by the cover arts of the volumes that are out now, we should at least get one for each girl, possibly a couple with all of them, so the end doesn't seem near. With that being said, given that the video is based on the girl's relationship with Hayato, the one who I am confident doesn't stand a chance is Riho. No matter how I look at her relationship with Hayato, she's out.
out of an overall of 100%, Riho would be a 0%. Followed by Shiragiku, surprisingly. She does have that first kiss, first love, childhood friend connections, but it seems like despite all that, Hayato didn't once consider a relationship with her. And he did consider it with Akane, who was on top of this too. I would have placed Akane higher on the list if I wasn't 100% sure that Hayato would confirm his feelings for the other two girls later in the manga. At the moment, Hayato not disregarding a potential relationship with Akane gives her an advantage, not big enough to compete with Ami and Oka though, because Oka has everything going on for her. And given that the manga doesn't seem to be ending soon, there is plenty of time for her romantic feelings to develop properly. But the same thing can be said about Ami. However, the reason I'll be giving Oka the edge is because Hayato and Ami's relationship feels more and more like a parent-child rather than anything else. So basically Riho is 100% out, Shiragiko and Akane are closely tied and close to Riho, Ami floats on top of them having an ace in her sleeve, but I think Oka will take it. This is how it looks at the moment and there you have it.